All right, guys, how's it going? It's Illuminostic, and I have for you one of my favorite stories. Uh, definitely one of the craziest things that I've ever experienced. And when I say one of the craziest things that I've ever experienced, what I actually mean is <clears throat> the one of the craziest. It's not one thing. Like this happened every night for seven days. Um, so it's a crazy week, um, and it's also going to serve as sort of a warning because you really have to be careful just like uh, I talk about in my flow motion lifestyle course and the video that I'm making tomorrow I'm sorry if that threw you off you guys I switched topics tonight but it's because I am not finished with our animal encounter uh, video that's going to pair nicely with the flow state so I, I switched it till tomorrow so I apologize if that threw you off um but it's the same kind of concept as if you have these peak experiences with dopamine and then you let it fall off uh, to below the previous baseline, right? Um, these kind of uh, peak experiences where you reach the top of the mountain, you really have to work to maintain that. Um, and in my case, I have to admit that I did not do that. I did it for a number of years um, and it was extraordinary, but now, I am in the process of picking myself up and dusting myself off and climbing back up the mountain. Um, so you, you really, you know, just learning these lessons is not enough. You have to really learn to be mindful. And it's, it's sort of like the higher the tightrope is, the narrower the wire, <laughs> right? So, um, but this stuff is really important. Also, it goes it goes well. Today we uh, went to uh, Paikawe Lagoon and floated around in a canoe, and we saw one spider monkey and some gigantic fish, but not a lot else. Um, but it's awesome just to go there. It's always awesome to go there. I will uh, have some video out tomorrow of the lagoon and some of the other uh, animal um, encounters, as I was saying. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so try to stay on top of your. Uh, as you expand your consciousness, the parameters of what is possible for you to experience also expand. And that's great um, if you have prepared the soil well. Uh, it's um, a very fitting, probably the most poignant expression or allegory, allegorical story uh, that presents this lesson and the potential uh, for damage when things go awry is the Sorcerer's Apprentice in um, Fantasia. Uh, that's exactly what will happen if you haven't, for example, integrated your shadow, uh, which I had not at all, um, before you really open your consciousness up and create a situation where you can actually manifest pretty much whatever you're thinking. Um, and, you know, I experienced that uh, as skeptical as I am and as you know i i have to understand the mechanisms behind things in order to believe them basically <laughs> and with that kind of manifestation sort of stuff uh it's difficult to find explanations um if you guys have watched a lot of my videos you know what i'm talking about i mean i've even managed to record some instances of that sort of thing happening to a degree that pretty difficult to explain in rational terms right so um so yeah, you have to make sure that you have done, done your shadow work and that you uh, have the discipline and willpower to actually focus that energy into something productive and something, um, what is the word, uh, you, you know, that can be sustained, something sustainable. Um, Otherwise, you can find yourself in a, in a, in a heap of dookie, uh, which I certainly managed to do. But before I got to that point, um, let me kind of tell you guys what happened. Uh, because I, I think these stories prove this stuff to a degree that's absolutely remarkable. Um, and so uh, this was, I think it was 2011, maybe. Um, I was kind of at the peak of my, what I call the Phoenix process, um, where I had really, really, really started to have a dialogue with my subconscious and uh, the relationship between my subconscious and the external world was putting on quite the show. Um, 
I kind of felt like that kid powder in that old movie, you know, that's kind of how it all went down. Um, and so one of the uh, results of having this dialogue, I'm calling it my subconscious, but you might call it your higher self, your inner guides, uh, the universal mind, God, the holy guardian angel. I, I think there are, are, there's terminology from a huge number of different traditions that describe this kind of experience. Uh, piercing the veil is um, another one. Um, uh, the Phoenix Process, uh, actually that name and the story connected to it, that is also a remarkable story, but let's stick with the fear, the fear story. So it was during this process and I was really, um, really intensely going through this rapid developmental stage and uh, I had set up tests for myself where I said, okay, I, I want to precognize, I want to prove that precognition is real. Uh, so I'm going to set up witnesses. I'm going to make a specific uh, declaration of intent, and it's going to be something that is within the realm of possibility, but almost impossible. Uh, so I would create these kind of conditions, and then I would actually pull it off. There's a story about, you know, the time that I decided I wanted to talk to Danny Carey from Tool, uh, and just drove right to him. And this became sort of routine. Um, it, it was, uh, and, and it was constant. It was constant. Um, and oftentimes while we're on the subject of this manifestation sort of theme, uh, I would discover usually, if not always, that whatever it was that I had cooked up in my head that I needed from the universe, I would discover that it was already there and that it's almost as if something had, something beyond me, something more powerful that you might even call God had arranged the circumstances before I even realized that I needed them. Um, which is, you know, really, <laughs> It's just something else. Uh, any, anyways, so the fear, um, the fear confronting week, it, all of this stuff happened in, in like stages. And so there were these seven day periods for a while where the theme would change um, of, you know, the, it was like, it was like I was taking courses in the invisible college and these courses were seven days. Uh, and so during this particular period, um, I had this Macy smoking jacket. My mom had married into a wealthy family and they gave her a gift card to Macy's. Uh, and it was a lot of money and she didn't want it. So she just gave it to me. And uh, I bought this really, really expensive smoking jacket. And I was living in Colorado and, and it was fall. So it wasn't freezing, but it was kind of cold. So I would put on this smoking jacket at exactly midnight and go for these walks. Um, and, you know, of course, at first I didn't even realize that I was doing this at exactly midnight. Um, I didn't, I didn't know what was happening. It's just that I was sort of compelled very strongly like this. I was just really like this impulse to get up, put on the smoking jacket and go outside. And so, um, I don't know that it would be accurate to say that I'm afraid of heights, but certainly edges, right? Uh, my mom had really bad anxiety and she was really overprotective. So... My analysis of this is probably that whenever I got close to anything that had a drop off when I was little, she would freak out probably. And so when I get close to edges, I get, you know, I, I get vertigo. Like I actually feel like I'm falling. And so it was dark out. Obviously it's a midnight in Colorado. I was in this beautiful valley at the time, by the way, with this cave that had spiral rock art and all kinds of crazy rock art and waterfalls. It was very sacred to the Ute people that lived there before us. Uh, it was an amazing place in Durango, Colorado. Um, and so I, I went outside and I was literally talking to this voice in my head um, during this entire period. It wasn't always there, but uh, I, was, I was talking to it. Um, and other people, this is interesting. Uh, Jerry Garcia, for example, described the voice. He had the same exact experience, ended up also calling it the Phoenix process, just intuitively, just as I did. And um, he described this voice as having hollow uh, mocking laughter. And I described it as hollow awful laughter before I'd ever read this interview where he mentioned this stuff, which is just, that blew my mind that there were people that had had ex this experience where it was so similar that they were using the same adjectives to describe the personality of this voice in their head. Uh, and he actually called it the Phoenix process as well, which was, 
I, my head almost exploded when I read that article. Um, it was in a magazine called Magical Times with a K, magic with a K, which was also significant. But anyways, so I'm like, okay, what do I do? And I look and I see the cliff and I understand instantly, I have to climb this cliff. So it's dark. I don't climb rocks. I, I did not want to do it at first, but I realized that I did not have the option of hesitation or, uh, you know, that I, I couldn't argue. It was almost beyond, it's not that I didn't have free will, but I knew that I had to cooperate in this. So I just scaled this cliff without thinking about it. Uh, and it was easy and I just did it. And then I was at the top and I was like, huh, I guess I'm not scared of that anymore. So. Uh, I spent a few hours up there just thinking and, and, and communicating with this, my subconscious or holy guardian angel or whatever the hell this voice is. And um, so I go down and the next night <clears throat> at exactly midnight, uh, I think it might have been, it was probably the third night when I noticed the clock uh, that I was leaving the house at exactly midnight. Um, put on the smoking jacket, go outside and I go right up the cliff as I did the first time. Um, and this time I brought my dog with me, uh, which would turn out to be significant. His name was Diesel. He was a little Staffordshire Terrier pit bull mix. I absolutely loved that dog. In fact, at one point I realized that he was the only living creature that I had ever loved, uh, like unconditionally because of the damage I had from my mother and, and that sort of stuff. So uh, really close to this dog, um, which will be relevant in a second here. So um, we're in the desert, Southwest Colorado. Uh, and so I'm walking along and I'm thinking, huh, there's really nothing out here this time. Um, I wonder what, you know, I was a little nervous, a little bit excited because I, I had already picked up on the theme. I'm going out here in the desert every night to confront some sort of fear. And the thing is, I'm not afraid of snakes. I love snakes. I just tried to grab an eight foot a uh, yellow and black jungle rat snake out of the street the other day. I mean, uh, I, I, I'm not I'm not scared of snakes, but uh, that doesn't mean that almost stepping on a rattlesnake in pitch black um, isn't going to scare the piss out of you. Uh, and you know that old uh, story about how white men can't jump? Um, I learned uh, just about the time that I asked, uh, what what is the lesson going to be tonight? I learned that white men can actually jump about 11 feet straight up and 10 feet uh, to the right. Um, I mean, it was in extraordinary how fucking far I jumped when that rattlesnake went off. Um, and I mean, it was under my foot for sure, like under my foot. Um, and I guess, you know, it was dark and it just didn't, I don't know why it didn't hear us coming, but I think this was part of the point. Um, and so... I hit the ground and my dog goes ape shit, like brah, and this pit bull that is trying to kill something is scary as hell. So my adrenaline's already pumping, my dog is in full blown murder mode and it hits me instantly. He's gonna get himself bit right on the face by this rattlesnake. And so I thought, I didn't think, that's not the right way to put it, but I knew, I intuited, calm the fuck down. And so instantly my energy, it's like, it's like a rattle. You're like, bzzz. you know, you can feel these almost like your electrons and protons are just spinning out of control. And I was able to just grab them and bring the entire energetic being into homeostasis in a split second. And as that, that, that feeling stilled that rattlesnake exactly perfectly with my inner being, stopped like the feeling and the correspondence with the sound of the rattlesnake were 100 percent synchronized i mean i could feel every little electrical impulse in my entire body and they were 100 percent correlated with the rattles in that snake's tail and somehow not only that but my dog just backed off i didn't yell at him i didn't you know it's just that i did not have this fear and so the danger disappeared um, and that may sound like a um, oh no I wasn't tripping um, although I certainly have encountered rattlesnakes while, while tripping um, so 
so yeah, so that happened. And then this is where it really starts to get uh, crazy because my dog and I, um, we have to go back the rest of the way down the into the canyon, you know, because I'd climbed way up to the top of this mesa. Um, and then we had to go back down into the canyon to get back to the house. And so there were rattlesnakes everywhere. It was not quite like that scene in Natural Born Killers, but it wasn't that far off from it either. I mean, they were here and there, you know, we weren't tripping over them like in the movie, but they were around, plenty of them. And um, I realized that there was no danger whatsoever as long as I remained calm. And I don't mean like be mindful, watch out, don't step on snakes. I mean like just calm. And I started doing snake charmer shit just impulsively. Like I got down on my hands and knees and got right into the face of a snake slowly and calmly. No response at all whatsoever from the snake. Uh, my dog started doing it. Um... <laughs> You know, so after we, after I guess I had satisfied myself that this thing with getting your energy right is extremely powerful and I've, you know, gotten a good enough handle on it to do this crazy shit that I'm out here doing. Um, interestingly, about a week later, the opposite thing would happen out there where I actually um, raised the energy in my being and all of the rattlesnakes in that field just <laughs> all at once. Um, but yeah, actually that story is somewhere on my channel. Uh, there's a video about ritual magic or something where you can find it. Um, so then, uh, I go, I go home and I go to sleep and, you know, I don't, uh, I don't recall even some of the lessons from the next couple of days because they just really weren't that, um, it was mostly internal processes, so they don't make for as interesting of, of, of a story. Um, but the, uh, the, the, the climax of this thing uh, certainly does, and it's by far the craziest part of the story. By the way, you guys, do me a favor, hit the like button, share, subscribe, support us on Patreon. I did bring the acoustic guitar out, so you know sometimes you guys request songs, and I'll play them. Uh, if you guys want to request a song for me to do with full backing track like i'll really learn it well um paypal 25 dollars uh and i will do that for you um otherwise we really do appreciate your support because we're not only demonetized but we are deprioritized which means that you really have to dig to find our videos uh and um i i i, I saw i think it was rogan talking about how they have released the new rules for uh, the algorithm for Facebook and how it's tied into all these other like YouTube and everything else. And uh, if you guys follow me, then you probably know that I was talking about how I tried to advertise for our retreats through my partner's Facebook and she doesn't use Facebook really. Uh, so, you know, it, this is not about her. And they had suspended her advertising. Um, and in this release, they said that they actually are going in to your phone. They're analyzing your keystroke speed, your rhythm of your keystrokes, get your personality type. They are also, um, uh, uh, you know, checking out whose devices you make contact with the most and profiling them as well. So it is absolutely true that they are collectively like, anyways. So it's very difficult for me to promote um, or do anything because if you are even too close to me, they'll deprioritize and bury my content if you share it. Um, so that's just, uh, it sucks. Some tool riffs, okay, yeah, I'll do that on an acoustic guitar. Um, I can still do it. I'll play a bunch of tool riffs in a minute. Um, what kind of products are exploring? Let me get through this story and then I'll jump back in the chat and we'll do music and stuff for a little while. Um, I do have to be respectful. My, my mother-in-law came to visit and she's, uh, but she said I can be loud until 11. So we have a couple hours. Uh, <laughs> uh, so where were we? Okay. So the cops, um, a lot of you guys probably know that I'm a lifelong outlaw. I was born that way, you know. Um, 
I was raised outside of society. I, I stayed outside of society for the rest of my life uh, after leaving my parents' house in Northern California, pot growing hills, you know what I mean? Like definitely um, haven't had a utility in my name for 20 years, haven't had a bank account since 2001, if then, you know? Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, and you know, I've been, I've been arrested. I've, I've been to prison. It was, it was not fair. I went to prison for a couple of Vicodin that I had a prescription for, uh, but I have been to prison, you know, so I'm definitely in general, I've gotten better, but I'm no friend to, to law enforcement and my paranoia levels have traditionally been very, very high, even if I'm not doing anything wrong, because I actually grew up in um, Fairfax County, right outside of Washington, DC, um, where it's a police state. We had the highest cop to civilian ratio anywhere in the United States was in the town that I lived in. And you, if you had long hair as I always did, or just were just out doing anything, the cops might just surround you from every direction, guns drawn, you know, and then frame you for something. Uh, it was, it was crazy. You know, if you weren't a yuppie, um, it doesn't matter if you're, I've always said this, this is not in the United States. It's not about race. Like people think it is. You've been forced to believe that it's really about class. It's a class war. Um, and as someone that grew up poor white trash, I'm totally convinced of that because I didn't get preferential treatment. You know what I mean? The rich kids did, but it didn't matter if they were white, black, blue, green, whatever, as long as they were rich. Um, so anyways, let's try to stick with this theme, I guess, but it is important to understand that, you know, I was not a friend of cops. And at the time I was a pot grower. Of course I had way too many plants. Everyone always does, uh, for my script, you know, and, um, and so it was the seventh night, the last night of this process of confronting these fears. Um, and my friend Ty had come over and you know, there are other elements of that conversation that I could make an entire video about as well, because I had started to suspect that I was a reincarnation of a specific person. And then I realized he was there and I started asking him questions that only the person that he would have been re the reincarnation of would know. And he knew all of it. And this was on the way out to the field to have this other conversation, which he didn't know what I was doing either. I just started asking him questions about this ritual we did out in the Sahara Desert in 1905. And <laughs> he didn't, I wasn't even that specific though. He knew everything, every last detail. Uh, the way the rocks looked, the type of bird that was flying overhead. I mean, it was crazy. So we get out to the field um, and he was, he was struggling with, he was raised Christian and he was realizing he was bisexual and it was really getting to him. And he wanted my help with that. And so I, you know, and. And sure enough, uh, the person that he was supposed to be reincarnation of was definitely bisexual, um, Victor Newberg, the poet. Um, and so, so I, I kind of worked through this stuff with him and I, I told him, you know, I've been going through this process every night and I just realized this is the seventh night, which means that this is the, the climax of it. And we're just here talking about, you know, your issues with your sexuality, which I'm not really particularly afraid of. So... <laughs> Uh, you know, I don't know what's going on. And we were walking out of the field by this point and we hit the road and I said, you know, the only thing I can think of that is a significant fear of mine that I have not confronted during this week is cops. And as soon as I said cops, red and blue lights, I mean, it was just like that. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Come on, come on. You know, um, a bit much, just, just a bit much. We're in the middle of nowhere, Colorado. Like I never saw cops in that neighborhood. I, I, it just, and we weren't doing anything. And in Colorado and Durango, smoking a joint and talking to a cop is probably, I saw people do it on a Saturday night. You know, I mean, there, it was pretty laid back. This is before every, it was legalized, you know, medical marijuana was legal. Um, but you know, they didn't care. They really didn't care. Um, so the point is to just get like randomly harassed in the middle of nowhere by a cop doesn't make any sense either. But as soon as I said the last fear that I haven't confronted is police or cops, whatever the exact words were, red and blue lights behind us. And so there was this flash of fear for a second when I thought, shit, I'm in trouble. Um, you know, I'm immediately thinking like, what do I have in my pocket? Uh, probably DMT. And um, so so, but then I realized you're being offered the opportunity to demonstrate to your friend here and to yourself that 
what you've been telling him is true because I, I had explained to him, you know, that, that if you have no fear, absolutely no fear though, like it's gotta be absolute, then nothing will harm you, but it has to be absolute. Um, and so of course there's benefits in having less fear because it's like your magnetism for that experience is greatly diminished, but much better to have none. And um, I think at this point in my life, I had gotten to that point uh, because um, after that instant of being afraid, I turned around and I walked over to the cop car and I leaned in he had his window down to talk to me, I guess. And I leaned in and just started going nuts on him right away. I mean, just saying the craziest things I could think of, definitely having kind of a threatening vibe intentionally. Um, I look over at Ty and no, I guess the first thing that happened is the cop interrupted me and he said, hey, are those your dogs? And I was like, well, what does that have to do with anything? We're trying to have a conversation here. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna need you right here, bud, you know? And uh, so um, Ty can see that I'm progressively pushing my luck with this cop, like as much as I can, you know, I get more and more and more confident. And uh, I look over and I see him put his hands behind his head and just he's just waiting to get cuffed up um but then but then he starts to realize that i actually am correct and that i'm like i'm just jedi mind fucking this cop and he knows nothing is going to happen so um you know i continue this crazy dialogue with this cop i mean i remember some of the things i said to him like um you know i have that's my house right there. You could see my backyard. And I was like, I have a pres prescription or, you know, I have enough paperwork to cover like 99 plants, but I have like 270 down there or something like that. And, uh, I also have DMT in my pocket and DMT in the house. And I'm, I'm high on DMT right now. Actually, I wasn't, but I was just trying to throw everything at him that I possibly could. Um, and he said, DMT, I've never heard of it. This was, you know, 10 years ago before everyone had heard of DMT. Um, but he said, I've never heard of it. And I said, well, it's a felony. And he said, I don't care what you're doing in your own house. And I said, I, officer, I'm not in my house. I'm in the middle of the goddamn road. You just lit me up, me and my friend here. And I, you know what I mean? Clearly we're not in my house. Like you think you're driving your so my sofa around my living room or what? Like, what are you talking about right now? I mean, I was going nuts on this cop. And uh, eventually he just says to me, um, cop is just a symbol. I'm a person. Am I free to go? And, uh, oh, I missed something. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Ty, once Ty realized that I've, I was, you know, proving this point that if you had absolutely no fear, you're just good to go. Um, uh, which kind of suggests this cop that maybe the whole non-player character theory is actually true because it kind of suggests that this cop, uh, was like a non-player character or something and his energy just, he, you know, <laughs> he just didn't know what the fuck to do. So um, at one point the cop says, uh, did your friend just crawl under my truck? And I look over and Ty, he's joined in. I forgot about that. Ty has started not quite as bold as me, but he's climbing around under the truck and doing all this weird shit. And this cop, you know, eventually just says, cop is just a symbol. Uh, I'm, I'm a person, am I free to go? And I said, did you just ask me if you could leave? And he's like, yeah, I wanna go home to my family. And I was like, all right, see you later officer. And he drives away super slow with his lights still going. <laughs> and that wasn't healthy for Ty, actually, because he'd already seen me do a lot of weird things like that. And uh, he kind of went a little bit off the deep end. Um, but yeah, that's the story, basically, in support of this idea that if you... No, I mean, I don't see what karmic boomerang has to do with, um, you know, I, 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 I don't, uh, I don't see that there was any bad karma to boomerang, uh, going on there. Um, you know, I, I, but the reason that I'm sharing this story right now, other than the fact that I was just not prepared for the other live stream that I was going to do tonight, um, uh, you know, we're living in some scary ass times. People are afraid. I'm afraid. I mean, we're, we're not doing well. Um, 
financially. No one, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's, I, I read, I read, I think yesterday that 69% of Americans have a thousand dollars or less in the bank. What is a thousand dollars? What is that? What is that going to do for you? When I lived in California, I would not get out of bed for a thousand dollars. I mean, what, what is a thousand dollars going to, especially in a place like California, that's, that's not even a, that's like a fraction of your rent. If you live in a studio apartment, you know what I mean? People are dangling um, above the abyss. Uh, it's, and that's not that's not the only thing. You know, we have COVID, which hasn't really actually been resolved totally, and then we have monkeypox looming on the horizon, and then we have World War Three brewing, um, and then all this talk of food shortages. Uh, we have the prospect of AI at the very least taking most of the jobs away from the human race, rendering some incredible percentage of them absolutely, um, oh, what is the word when you're like antiquated uh, farm equipment? Um, obsolete, uh, you know, we have all of that stuff and then a whole lot of other stuff, uh, you know, that we're, we're trying to actually ascend in consciousness in the midst of all of these um, influences that are acting as sandbags um, and worse really and the reality is that the more this anxiety takes root the more fear we have the more uncertainty we have the more of it we're going to experience we are going to make these realities come true um, and that may be going too far if we're talking about things happening on a global scale like World War III. I don't know that we can take personal responsibility for having fear and that fear uh, externalizing as something like a world war. Um, but we certainly can consider what is the opposite of um, fear, and that would be love. And we can deduce from those circumstances that we are living in that our ancestors, that the, 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 our, our mothers and fathers and grandfathers and grandmothers did not have sufficient love to create a world in which things like world wars and nuclear bombs are not relevant. I have no idea what that sound was, but it was pretty scary. Um, yeah, uh, and, and also, you know, fear makes you stupid. And I don't know if you guys have been to planet Earth lately, uh, but um, as Frank Zappa said, you know, they named it the Earth, which is a dumb kind of name, but they named it right because we behave the same. We are dumb all over, <laughs> dumb all over, near and far. Uh, dumb all over black and white people we is not wrapped tight um you know so uh we can't have any more of that we can't afford any more um iq points uh to be uh you know erased for any reason for any cause um and so through whatever mechanism we can discover uh we have to eliminate the influence of fear uh, and anxiety. Um, and there are a number of ways that we can do that. Um, <clears throat> one of those ways is to, you know, get in touch with your holy guardian angel and go out in the desert and get in the face of rattlesnakes in the middle of the night. That's not for everybody though. Um, there are things that are maybe a little bit less uh, potentially deadly that you can do. But honestly, if you really want to get it done, um, I think risk is essential. Uh, you know, we have become really dependent upon our comforts and protections and the sort of concept that we can nerf the world mm -hmm. and somehow that's going to be better for us. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't think that it's, it's really possible to have freedom and absolute security. Um, so again, the antidote is courage. Uh, in my practice as a medicine facilitator, um, Probably what I've, there are two things that I've noticed uh, that have 
I guess, co coagulated in the collective identity or in the average uh, male in particular is um, narcissism and ego sort of wrapped together and just blown to proportions that are just, it used to be very rare and now it's sort of the standard. Um, and then on the other side of that, uh, we have um, total cowardice. Um, and, and it's sort of the opposite of what I think we're all trying to develop and where we're all trying to take this, um, take this stuff. Solutions. We're talking about solutions. I don't want to get too hung up on the negatives. Um, but uh, one of the things that we can do for sure is watch my live stream on Flow State tomorrow because, um, you know, as, as we become more and more spiritual people, uh, generally what happens is that our IQ uh, disintegrates and our critical thinking capacities evaporate and wind starts whistling through our ears. And this is not what we want either. Um, I mean, I'm being funny to an extent, um, but I, I'm not really. What, 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 what we need to do is retain all those capacities while increasing our spiritual capacities. And what prompted that joke is that I was thinking about how, you know, chemical engineering, deliberate, conscious chemical engineering of our own uh, neurobiology is an essential part of this. When we think about the elevation of consciousness, raising ourselves to higher and higher states, um, I think that we want to believe that it's only going to be a matter of drinking a thousand cups of ayahuasca over the period of five years or meditating and learning pranayama and doing yoga all the time and that that is going to be enough to pierce the veil and see the face of Isis and it's, it's just not. And the reason is that I think we have been brought so far into imbalance that the path to correcting that imbalance uh, sort of requires us to use every tool at our disposal. And so um, learning how to bioengineer our neurobiological environment um, and our biome in our brain, this is something that I'm researching more and more and more. Um, so th those things, those things are absolutely important. And the main thing to focus on is your dopamine, your relationship with dopamine, um, because a big part of courage comes from success, which is derived initially from motivation to engage in some behavior, uh, to, to attempt to do something that you probably doubt whether you can do or not. Um, so th those things are, um, you know, the, 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 the fundamental uh, behaviors that we can engineer into our, our lives and take control of. And then of course, the other aspect of it is a conscious relationship with our energetic and emotional state. Um, and one of the best ways I think to uh, develop that is really just through breathing. And there's so much uh, that has been said about all of that that I, I hesitate to really take up any of our time going into it, except that um, Pranayama is probably uh, undervalued. Um, can I foretell you finding money? Probably not. If you can um, develop a conscious relationship with your, your, your dopamine, develop a, a discipline and willpower um, and, you know, conceive of something that is consistent with your talents um, and abilities, 
and then exploit that uh, to your benefit, then sure, I can predict that you will come into money. Um, but that's, that's, that's how that kind of thing works. Um, and then, you know, you're asking about mind over matter when it comes to health stuff, only to a certain extent. Um, you know, I, I, I think that there are limits uh, to every, everything that, that, that we do. Um, so, and, you know, and those limits are determined by the laws of creation. Um, they are exerting influence that keeps us within certain parameters. So, um, you know, I, I think your mental state, your attitude, your emotional state, there's absolutely no doubt that that has some relationship to your physical well-being. Um, but if you're talking about turning around stage four cancer with only your mind, um, I think you're going to find that most people will not have success with that. Um, you know, and it's also very important that we're realistic about what these sort of ideas that fall under the category of magic uh, potentially can actually do and where their limitations are. Um, and that is actually how I got myself into trouble. Um, you know, Aleister Crowley actually wrote a long time ago that um, the most common mistake that a magician makes is to think that his magic can do more for him than it can. And so, you know, this concept of like wish demons and uh, ego inflation and spiritual narcissism, all of these things come from uh, taking a sip from the well and becoming intoxicated on our own reflection that was in the water. Um, uh, Chris Kelver, LSD is still my favorite psychedelic. I would, I, I prefer it to ayahuasca or anything else. Ayahuasca is, you know, the most powerful and it's the best for dealing with trauma and it probably puts you in touch with, um, you know, telepathy and sort of uh, these sort of underused capacities of consciousness that we have. Um, but in terms of just, uh, and actually in a clinical sense or in a neurophysiological sense, uh, LSD actually causes more um, neuroplasticity and neurogenesis than any of the other classical psychedelics. What's going on, John Richards? Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, I still like LSD. Uh, I have not, you know, some people become totally just all about things that are not made by man, you know, the plant medicine people. Um, that's not me. I think that what we need to do is learn to, uh, you know, live in a sort of harmony with nature, which means that sometimes we'll invent something like LSD that's actually good. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's, I think it's a very toxic, um, attitude to to say that anything that man creates is, is is just fundamentally negative just because mankind did it um that's that's a fundamentally flawed and absolutely incorrect uh uh belief um the past life thing. Uh, I don't. Did I? Did I really wrap up the uh, the mastering fear thing? I, I, I don't know that I. I don't know that I really. Um, uh, well, I guess I'm. All right. Let's go into AMA mode. That's fine. I just noticed there's still a lot of people popping on here, and we're not talking about mastering fear anymore, so they're all disappearing. Um, but you know, this is this is this is a, an important topic because one of the things that I hate the most about the spirituality industry, which I'm a part of, I mean. I'm here to uh, make money off of my knowledge and um, helping to heal people. You know what I mean? I'm in that business. There's no denying it. I don't see any reason to deny it. People, people say that the shaman shouldn't take any money. That's odd because, you know, in the village 200 years ago, if you wanted the shaman to do something for you, you brought him a monkey or something. You know what I mean? Um, or things that people don't really want to admit, um, you know, things that we don't want to talk about. Um, you might have brought him. Um, hint, 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 wink, wink, uh, nudge, nudge. Um, but, uh, you know, so what, what, what I, I, I really hate to see 
is people getting taken advantage of, which is what 90% of the spirituality industry consists of. People completely making things up and charging money for it. Um, and also, it's not just about ripping people off. People are getting the false idea that you can just attain to whatever level uh, they're paying someone um, to tell them they have reached this place. Um, and that's not how it works. Uh, and one of the things that, uh, in my opinion, falls under that category is past life regression. Um, for me to get any kind of information or to recall any of that stuff took a tremendous amount of work. You know, I was 31 years old when I started to get to the place where I felt like I could even evaluate my own thoughts about this kind of thing and to have, you know, the ability to distinguish between a wish demon, which is just the kind of stuff you want to believe, but may not be a legitimate intuition or, you know what I mean? Um, and also, you know, traditionally we've had a lot of respect for shamans and seers and magicians uh, and those people you know, all the different names for that type of person, not because it's just that you should idolize people because that's their archetype. It's because they put in a lifetime of work to get good at it, you know? So um, I, I know people that have paid people, you know, hundreds of dollars to do past life regressions that are just really encouraging people to develop an idea about who they were in a past life that they want to believe and running with it. You cannot pay someone to do work for you. You have to do this through your own internal processes. And even then, you will never be sure that the information you get is actually true. And I'll tell you why. Um, in my case, I knew, you know, all of this stuff from Crowley's books. Um, I, you know, like I said earlier in the live stream, I was walking down the street with this guy that I realized was also in the story of Crowley. And he was Victor Newberg. And I asked him things that only Victor Newberg would know. And he knew all the right answers. Um, there is a tremendous amount of stuff that happened. Also, I had the same habits. I wore the smoking jacket. Um, you know, when I was younger, I, I would smoke a little bit of heroin with my coffee that was, you know, full of sugar and black. And you could stand a spoon in it and eggs with salt for breakfast. You know, I had the same morning ritual. I did the same drugs. I believed all the same sort of stuff. Uh, I mean, I could go on and on. It was crazy, but here's the thing. It does not mean that I'm the reincarnation of anyone. It doesn't mean that reincarnation is even real. It suggests that there might be a repository of information that we can access. Um, I don't think that explains what happened in my case to the degree that I'm satisfied with it because I didn't start thinking about Crowley and then start to think this stuff. It was forced into my attention. I thought he was just this evil, weird Illuminati guy that I, did, I just wasn't interested in it. And it's like the universe kept directing my attention to it until I couldn't ignore it anymore. So that's a bit odd. Um, but then there's also genetic memory. So you can remember anything that your ancestors remembered or, or experienced, excuse me. You can access your ancestors' memories. So I'm English. Crowley was English. Totally could just be genetic memory. Um, it could also be that quantum loop theory uh, is true. And that what happens is, and this actually makes a disturbing amount of sense, that the universe collapses back into a point um, after basically every possibility that can configure itself based on the current set of natural laws, right? So all the possibilities that are within the realm of possibility without overriding any of the laws of creation, all that has happened and then the expansion phase of the universe ends and there's a contraction phase, systole and diastole, right? Um, and it collapses back into the singularity and then it explodes again and the whole process starts over. And it happens the same exact way over and over and over and over and over. And so, according to that theory, no one is reincarnated. It's just that I've done this so many times um, that I remember some of the stuff. You know? Um, so, that's that, and that's important to do that. You know, you have to remember that when it comes to metaphysics and knowledge of the spiritual realm, uh, you are never going to know anything. And belief is the death of intelligence. You, you don't want to arrive at belief. 
you you know you want to use the same processes basically that people use in the scientific method to ascertain uh, what your um, spiritual dimension consists of and what's real and what's not um, you know I, I saw the name of a group on Facebook the other day was uh, abandon suspend logic uh, accept magic and I think that's absolutely the stupidest advice that anyone could give anyone um, you know if you will never have any kind of meaningful spiritual reality if that is your process um, this isn't about just making stuff up and believing it. So, you know, having said all that, I, I think that you have to develop a dialogue with the universe. And you have to have objectivity. You have to have courage. You know, you have to be able to live without the dissonance, uh, the interference pattern that is fear, right? In order to receive... Uh, information and inspiration you want to become like a hollow tube so you can draw down fire from heaven right and um the uh the the best way to fuck that up is to have fear um and all of its different manifestations you know um what are cocaine mushrooms they're not real. I don't know. I've never heard of that before. Uh, so, you know, I, I think that um, developing that dialogue with the universe is fundamentally about establishing a bridge of communication between your conscious and subconscious mind. Uh, because I think that phenomena like synchronicity um, and... Uh, Basically, ex just expanding the parameters of your perception, um, that the secret to that is that you have a unified uh, bulbous apparatus, <laughs> right? That you're that you're you're able to access uh, all of your mind. Um, what is your question, Nam Mai Oho Ringi Kyo? That's nice. Is the tool guy still here that requested tool riffs? Um, because I will, I will play tool on this acoustic guitar if, um, oh yeah, man, I've thought I was dying. Um, I thought I was dying on psychedelics many times, many, many times, especially ketamine. Every time I take ketamine, I think I'm going to die. Um, that brings me back to this idea of fear, you know, and something I didn't mention in the main body of this uh, live stream is that one of the main benefits, I think, of developing fearlessness and remember that, you know, we are always assuming that common sense is in effect. So we're not talking about becoming fearless in the sense that you become stupid. Um, <laughs> don't do that. Uh, but you know what I mean? Like uh, within fearless within the, the, confines that are dictated by common sense um not having fear of death would allow people to transcend control uh to an incredible degree if everyone realized that we were one infinite consciousness um that we are eternal and all this pain is an illusion uh that there is no end uh that isn't a beginning um, you know, it would be really, really difficult to control people um, because, you know, what is a life sentence or getting executed for treason if you know you're just going to be right back or you're going to be in another form somewhere else? Uh, it is also one of the things that makes religion so dangerous because if people are convinced that they have, and this is why they hate people like me that talk about this kind of stuff, the censors and whatnot. Um, because basically what I am saying is that you are one eternal consciousness, whether you're Muslim, Jewish, fucking Hari Krishna, whatever, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever weird doctrine you've been brainwashed by is not going to take away your immortality or the lack of uh, uh, brainwashing. 
right? So, you know, and that takes away control, that possibility that you are already redeemed. Um, you, that, you know, you, the, the original sin uh, is, is compensated for by creation, um, not the individual's culpability or some savior. Um, that is an extremely dangerous uh, belief or, or a bit of knowledge um, to have escaped the laboratory, so to speak. Uh, and this is why, you know, one of the main reasons I think that psychedelics have been oppressed, that the Gnostics were all burned alive, you know, that any kind of spirituality that you can't put a label on, right? If you're a Christian, um, you know, then you have to fulfill these prerequisites. And what it allows them to do in the case of, you know, Islam is say, you know, you have to blow up, you know, this building and then you'll have all these virgins. Um, so you see what I'm saying? It's like it gives the whoever is dispensing um, the dogma uh, of that religion is able to coerce and convince people to do all of these things in order to fulfill the prerequisites of salvation, right? Um, someone like me or, you know, there's, it's not like this is like my singular message or something. This is, you know, plenty out of the bottle at this point. Um, but this, this idea that you have that and you don't have to do shit to acquire it, um, is extremely dangerous to the powers that be. And it basically takes, um, takes their ability to control the stupidest and most dangerous of their, uh, minions. It takes it completely out of their hands. Um, and so, so it's, you know, everything is potentially a double-edged sword. It, it, it all has, you know, the yin yang symbol is so ubiquitous because it is speaking the most fundamental truth about the, you know, f the, the structure of reality. You know, it is one thing, which is nothing. It's a zero, right? It's a circle. It's one thing that is nothing. That, that's amazing in itself, but that it consists of equal parts of dark and light, and that within the darkness and the light, there is darkness and light. Um, that knowledge, uh, absolutely perfect. It's absolutely perfect, the, the yin-yang symbol. Um, but, and so it is a glyph of everything in creation. Every event, every idea, every plant, every person, uh, every idea, the potential to do harm and the potential to do good. And the reality is that once most things are set in motion, they're going to do both, right? Like you look at Christianity, it has killed more people than any other force in human history. Uh, it has uh, destroyed cultures. It has, you know, it set science back 200 years. It has uh, uh, compelled all sorts of atrocious acts of um, condemnation and brutality and oppression. Uh, it still uh, influences people in our society to live uh, nowhere near uh, what the fullest expression of their being would be or to derive anything like the greatest joy from life. Christianity is absolutely fucking horrifically fucking evil. But it also has fed a lot of children and, you know, there's all kinds of good works that are done by the church. Um, you know, so it's that yin-yang inescapable quality of, um, and, and what I was, I, I, I was kind of long-winded about that, but what I'm saying is that, uh, this knowledge of the continuity of uh, consciousness uh, that we call reincarnation or whatever um, has that as well because uh, it has the potential to liberate from fear, but it also has uh, the potential to create religions and therefore wreak all kinds of havoc. Um, hair and beard for occult powers, um, you'll basically find me uh, uh, never, ever, ever believing in superstitions. Um, ever. Um, for me, uh, I saw a meme the other day that had 
a religion, a little guy that represented religion, and he was in this little bottle. And then there was a bigger bottle that said spirituality, and he was laughing at the religion guy. But then there was this guy outside of both bottles, and he was consciousness. And that's how I think about it. Um, I, you know, I, 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 I've gotten some um, flack from some people because I say that I don't believe in negative entities uh, or, you know, like n evil spiritual beings. Um, but if you think that the universe is a reflection of the spiritual, right? Which I think is a no brainer. This is like metaphysics 101. This is one of the most simple and obvious elements of it. It's the only way that, you know, this world is, is just a, um, reflection, right? So a shadow is nothing. A shadow isn't a thing. There's no, a shadow is not a thing. It's the absence of light. It has no positive, um, and I don't mean positive in the sense of good, but it has no kinetic energy. It has nothing. There's nothing happening there. It's just shadow. That's what shadow is. Shadow is chaos. And it is, it is the space between the symmetry and order, symmetry and order being what give us beauty, right? Like the human face, we perceive a human face as being beautiful depending on how symmetrical it is. Um, there have been studies that have proven this, right? So that's order. And in the absence of order, we have chaos. So, you know, that's why I say that if you have this amazing fate and destiny, you can still catch a bullet walking down the street one day, right between the eyes. Because there's chaos and order in the universe, right? And I think one of the things, you know, speaking of mastering fear, that people have a really hard time accepting is just what I just described. That, you know, that you just have to live with that. Um, that you can become awake and you can align yourself with all sorts of forces and intelligence and a universal mind and groups of people uh, that are doing um, something that is uh, congruent with your purpose and therefore you can become exponentially more powerful and your fulfillment of your objective is increased dramatically, but it is not a guarantee. You can still, there's chaos, random, random shit, you know? And um, again, if you understand that you are a splinter of an infinite consciousness, then you can be fine with it and get on with your mission. Um, so do me a favor, you guys, hit the like button, share, subscribe, support us on Patreon. We are demonetized. So I don't get anything for um, doing these live streams. The super chat button is disabled. Uh, so I did put uh, methods for supporting us in the uh, description. I'm gonna copy them, put them in the chat. Don't miss the live stream tomorrow um, because we're gonna talk about flow state, which is really gonna help anyone. I This has been such a powerful revelation for me and you know I it does feel to me like it was like revealed you know it, it I just the way that I got the answers that I was looking for was really extraordinary um but you know I I had just I needed to address my own I had been sick for a long time I had become depressed I pulled out of it to an extent but I realized that I hadn't gone as far as I would like and so I thought well okay so dopamine I need to manage my dopamine and get moving again and then that led to, um, well, the first thing actually was the discovery of the role of glutamate as opposed to serotonin and serotonergic compounds and pre and post synaptic focus in psychiatry and whatnot. That came first. And then uh, the, the dopamine uh, regulation, conscious regulation of dopamine. Um, and then I realized that it's going to take more than just managing it chemically. Uh, there are behavioral things that have to be considered. Um, and then I started looking at flow state, uh, which has a, an, an intrinsic relationship to dopamine. Um, uh, so this is just snowballed and snowballed, long story short, into uh, just a, a, a massive revelation for me in terms of, um, you know, what we need to do and how we can actually structure things very simply uh, to live our best life to, um, you know, in my opinion, what we need to do 
to live our best life is to constrain um, our demons, <laughs> you know, and just just everything that we do to our singular purpose, because we're not going to be happy otherwise. Until you can do what it is that you are here to do on this earth, right? you're not going to be happy. And, you know, Aleister Crowley called it your true will. You must discover your true will and you must constrain every breath, every thought, every deed to be in, conform in conformity with that will or else you're going to have collisions with other people and you're going to be unhappy. Um, and, you know, there are other things that he said that actually, uh, uh, it, it's almost like the book of the law was really just an instruction manual for maintaining flow state. And that's what I'm noticing about a lot of uh, systems. That's really what, you know, they're all about. Um, for example, one of the things that you have to do with your dopamine in order to maintain um, a sort of homeostasis, I guess, which isn't exactly what you want, but you know, you have to have that management of the baseline. Um, you you need to do things for the doing of the thing, not because you're seeking a result, right? And Crowley said, the worst thing a person can do is to set an attainable goal, right? That's actually, actually a quote from him. And he also said, pure will, unassuaged of lust of result, is in every way perfect. Um, which is the same as saying you have to do the thing for the... Uh, Man, did we just get botted super hard? Here, let me let me ban this person real quick. Yeah, that's gotten super bad for me. Um, okay, so anyways, I don't want to talk about the um, flow state stuff too much because I'm doing that live stream tomorrow. It'll be preceded by a... Um, video of the animal encounters that we've had here man there's been some crazy ones i had a top ear a wild top ear like in the cameras you know their nose is almost like an elephant trunk 4k like you can see every hair in this thing's nostril it's it's absolutely ridiculous and then one of the other greatest things i've ever seen in my life um the, the guy the guy that was here for a retreat, which we're still doing, by the way, you can still book retreats uh, with us. There's a email in the description. Um, I'm teaching hermetic magic, hermetic ritual magic, like the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram and uh, the middle pillar and these sort of um, rituals that can really be thought of more as just like really sophisticated meditations. Um, but yeah, that stuff and, uh, you know, all about plant medicine um, in Missouri, Ecuador. Uh, so come and see us for those what, what was i talking about oh yeah so the guy um this is crazy monkeys apparently have superstitions um and the reason that i have realized this is that if you give these monkeys in town the capuchin monkeys an onion they will rip it open and they'll rub it all over themselves to keep the bugs away but here's the thing they won't do it unless they're in a human's lap so it really looks like they believe that if they're not in the lap of a person the onions won't work. And so, um, I, I gave, I gave Austin a, an onion. And so lighter monkey, who is actually the only non-human animal that's ever been videoed cooking food with a stolen lighter. Um, something the whole troop now does, uh, lighter monkey gets in his lap and starts rubbing the onion and then there's another monkey and another monkey and another monkey and another monkey by the time it's over austin had seven fucking capuchin monkeys writhing and pissing all over him <laughs> in his lap it was unbelievable it was one of the funniest things i've ever seen in my entire life you can find the video on my channel actually so um so yeah if you come down to see us we don't just drink ayahuasca you know where you're going to waterfalls and going out to top ear island to see the top ears and squirrel monkeys and whatnot um so come see us before we fill up uh we're doing still august september maybe october um but the other thing is i'm never going to do it again so uh if you have been wanting to drink ayahuasca with illuminostic this is it if you don't come this season i'm not doing this ever again um not that i you know it's got nothing to do with the medicine or anything i just uh 
there are other things that I, I, I think I should focus on. Um, so this is just one time. Um, actually, I will do it, but I'll do it for free with people that I have selected. Uh, I, I won't do it with the public anymore after this year. So um, there's that to consider. All right, so the AMA can keep going. The guy that requested the tool, is he still here? I know I asked before. Also, let me scroll through the chat and see if there are any uh, questions that I missed. Well, I can continue kind of to address um, what's going on, Andrea Dingbat. Um, yeah, you know, oh, by the way, you guys, if you want a uh, con condensed version of uh, this live stream, I'm really unhappy uh, that Enrica didn't tell me that I was wearing such an absolutely atrocious shirt when we made this video uh, years and years ago. Um, but it's solid. The video is solid. Uh, so I, I, I'm going to put a link, um, to the old video in the description, um, when we're done, I guess I'll wait till we're done. Uh, and then you can just watch the video where I tell the stories. Cause I, this is the first time that I've just completely repeated myself on this channel. Um, <laughs> uh, cause I did, I did make a video about, uh, mastering fear and told those stories a while ago. Um, Yeah, and I mean, you know, you guys, obviously, uh, you know, you, you don't need to be a, a shaman or a genius or a mystic. Um, no, not this shirt. It's the shirt that I'm wearing in the old video. Um, it's just really, like, frumpy, and uh, um, it, it's just, you'll see, it's just all baggy and, like, weird. Um, I don't know where the hell it came from, but, yeah, when I, I rewatched the video today, I was, I was not happy with my clothes. <laughs> Anyways, I will, um, I will, uh, by the way, you guys, you know, go, feel free to ask, um, questions in the, in the chat while I'm looking up. Um, but I was going to, I was going to share, you know, something else about the utility of having no fear. Um, you know, it's. It's, it's pretty obvious, like I was saying, you know, I don't know that you necessarily really need, uh, it's, it's obvious, um, but, uh, it can do more for you than is obvious, I guess, is where I was going with that. having more trouble typing and talking than I expected. Well, when I look for the old video, all that comes up is the live stream that we're watching. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll put that link in the description if, if anyone needs it. Probably just could have gone to my history. Um, but I, I was gonna, uh, I was gonna tell you guys another story, I guess, about, um, Uh, of, of, about this ability to like really keep yourself calm. You know, I, I've talked about how I used to be an outlaw. Uh, I don't know that I would say that I, I'm not an outlaw anymore. Um, but, and I also want to be clear that when I say outlaw, I don't mean criminal. Um, you know, outlaws, as I understand it, are, are people that have ethics, uh, but just absolutely no regard for laws that shouldn't exist. And when there are laws that shouldn't exist, total willingness to capitalize on them. Um, you know, that's what an outlaw is. Uh, and so um, the statute of limitations is totally, uh, you know, it's all good. Um, so I can, I can tell this crazy story. I don't know if I want to now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, an outlaw story. Uh, yeah, if you're thinking you're an outlaw, that, that's excellent. Um, 
But yeah, so it was uh, harvest time in Northern California. I had long hair uh, 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 and a Grateful Dead shirt, uh, hemp necklace, the whole thing, probably maybe even dreadlocks at that time. Um, and I was driving, no kidding, the most ticketed um, uh, car in existence, a cherry red convertible BMW. Uh, and it, that particular model too, it was, it was the most, it was like bait for cops, right? So, and, and you know, what I'm saying about the energy of this is that usually if a cop makes contact with you for no real reason, it's because he's planning to go after you, right? So when you're able to turn that around, it's a little weird. So um, I had, I don't know, three ounces of MDMA or something all in separate bags. Um, in my stuffed, and this was a long time ago, uh, <laughs> Stuffed into my pants, so my, my, my crotch was like this gigantic, bulging, uh, really obvious um, if I stood up. Uh, and so I rolled over the, the stop line, um, the line at the stop sign, <clears throat> and just barely. And he lights me up, pulls me over, and I, I was drinking this massive energy drink. Uh, like I said, this was a long time ago. And... Um, my then wife was in the passenger seat and she had a pound of hash in her purse. It was huge. Uh, and hash actually isn't covered by the um, California medical thing. They don't, they won't do anything about it now, but uh, back then um, it was still a thing. So uh, he, he says, why are you guys, why are you shaking so much to my wife? Because she's just like, you know, flopping around over there and I, I was like energy drinks we're drinking energy drinks so he pulls us out of the car and he has me walk over to his squad car and uh lean on the hood and um, I'm sitting there talking to him and I just remain so absolutely calm that he just didn't pursue anything he just um, he actually told my wife, you know, if you have anything in the car, go get it and bring it to me. And she said, okay, well, actually I, I did lie. We have a little bit of hash. And she went back to the car and reached in off that big pound of hash and broke off a little tiny chunk and brought it to the cop. And he's like, so do you want, you want this to, to, can we rub this in the street or are you going to go to jail? And we're like, is that rhetorical or what? And so he let us go. Um, with, I don't know, $7,000 and three ounces of MDMA in my pants. <laughs> and I'm telling you, it is because I had managed to um, develop, I had developed that capacity to remain absolutely calm no matter what. Um, again, I do not advise using the methods that I used to get to that point because they were all extremely dangerous and pretty foolish. Uh, antagonizing rattlesnakes and cops and climbing up cliffs in the middle of the night. Um, those are all things that can be hazardous to your health. And so, you know, I don't advise them. Um, I don't see any more questions. The tool guy must have left a while ago. Um, so if anybody has any questions or song requests, uh, Basically, my rule with the song is that if I know it well enough that I can pull it up from a chord chart, even if I've never tried to play it before, um, I will I will humor you and probably embarrass myself and I'll give it a shot. Um, my chat is uh, pretty slow, though, so... Um, Yeah, I mean, for those of you that dialed in late, I guess, you know, the bullet point of this presentation is just that if you have absolutely no fear, nothing is going to affect you, you know? And it's nothing in this universe is absolutely absolute, but close enough that it might as well be. Um, opiate? Oh, geez. Well, you know, that kind of thing doesn't really qualify as... Uh, let me see if I can do it, because I have an acoustic guitar here, you know. Um, but I'll look it up and see if it's if it's even reasonably doable. You might have to wait for an electric um, 
an electric live stream, which by the way is about to improve. I finally broken down learning to use a DAW. Uh, so my tone will be a lot better. Um, man, it's been so many years since I've heard this. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't remember even the rhythm of it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think I can do it because I just don't even I don't even remember the rhythm. I haven't I haven't heard this song in 20 years. Um, yeah, that doesn't seem right either. So, yeah, if somebody has something other than opiate. <laughs> um, yeah, did you guys lose sound? I don't think you would lose sound. All right, well, I don't see anything, um, and no questions, no requests of anything I actually can play. Um, fear or the Conquering of Fear. I was born an outlaw. Um, Yeah, well, you know, I can kind of recapitulate and say that um, here's a reason why uh, psychedelics are very good at managing fear. Uh, but if you're going to uh, employ this method, you you need to have you need to do it wisely. Um, but really high doses of psychedelics, um, when you have been as afraid as you can be on a strong dose of LSD. Uh, Normal fear after that is going to seem like a very trivial matter. Um, so, you know, that's that's one aspect of it. Um, but I think that the most important thing is to develop mindfulness and to learn to use breath control to change your state. Um, that's really... Uh, the only thing that you can do um, short of actually going and finding your biggest fears and confronting them. Um, I did both things and um, tool acoustic. Uh, I did both things and it, and it worked wonders for me. Um, See if I can remember this. Um, you said that you would like Tool only. Uh, uh, Led Zeppelin. You're more of a Zeppelin person. How about if I do Tool's version of No Quarter? Um, <laughs> so Tool playing Zeppelin, and I actually think that uh, Tool absolutely mopped the floor with um, Zeppelin on their version of uh, No Quarter. Way better, man. They made them sound just old-fashioned and just silly by comparison uh, yeah I, I thought it was pretty silly when I went back I was like well what is what is the original version of this sound like and um, this was not nearly as metal let's see how is this Okay, yeah, yeah.
something like that. Oh, and then the other riff is... Um, <laughs> electric one too but there you go I at least made an effort um, to play tools version of a Led Zeppelin song on <laughs> acoustic guitar um, third eye I don't know the pot let's see is there. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember how he comes in, man. I used to do that song in a band. Though, actually. Um, what else? Uh, what else? I know more of that song, though. Um, Who are you to wave your finger? You must have been Practically raised again. Rob the grave to snow the cradle and burn the evidence down. House of cards and glass, so don't be tossing your stones around. You must have been. And then um, I don't remember the lyrics though. And then there's the other part. Um, how's it go? of the riffs um, oh my favorite one though my favorite one is man I can't believe I can even remember this uh, <laughs> it's been a long time um, the best riff though is, oh yeah <laughs>
Now what's the difference? Kangaroo be stoned is guilty as the government. Now <laughs> we've been shades of cozen in the go. Got a lemon juice up in your eye. <laughs> I really have to practice that, but but yeah. Sort of, sort of it. Are they back with this damn man? My my channel gets botted so hard. Um Okay, so oh I did I forgot to play part of uh the the tool cover of No Quarter. This is good. It's this, I think. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, and then look, they use different bots, so I actually have to go through and report it individually. I wonder what happens if you click on going to California. All right, you know why I like doing this? Because it forces me to um, embarrass myself publicly, which... <laughs> It's really humbling, um, but no, seriously, uh, uh, it forces me to play things that I would never normally play, so I, I find out whether I can do it or not. <clears throat> And, you know, Led Zeppelin is something I would never, ever try to sing. Uh, is that this? No, it's not that song. That's... Is it that? Hey, lady. No, that's a different one. Okay, so let, let me see if I can do this. Oh, right, right, right. Sorry, I'm going to destroy the rhythm because I don't really know. Spend my, spend my days with a woman unkind. Smoke my stuff and drink. Going to California with an ache in my heart Someone told me there's a girl out there Loving her eyes and flowers in her hair Chances on a big jet plane. Never let them tell you that they're all wild. 
I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it could have been worse. I Won't Back Down is not by Johnny Cash, is it? I thought that was, um... Well, thank you, Andrea. Uh... Um... Is that what you mean? The, um, I won't back down by um, Tom Petty? Or is there a Johnny Cash song also called? Um, oh, Over the Hills and Far Away. Yeah, yeah, I probably would have done that one better. Um, what is... Um, I won't back down. Did he cover that on that album? Is that what you, is that what happened? Is that why you're saying it's Johnny Cash? What will you tell me? I mean, I don't see any indication that Johnny Cash ever played that here. <laughs> um. <clears throat> but I would imagine Tom Petty's in my range. I could maybe try to do this, I guess. chorus yeah sorry chorus is as far as we're gonna get I, I have no idea yeah. <laughs> I 
A boy named Sue. Holy shit. Uh, anything by Johnny Cash. Um, oh, nice, Chip. <laughs> there you go. See, don't be afraid to join the live stream. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm surprised that I can't remember. Uh, I can't remember this. like that, right? Hey, will stand my ground. I won't, won't back down. <laughs> sure, way off. Well, I know what's right. I got just one life. In a world that keeps on pushing me around, I'll stand That was driving me nuts. I couldn't remember. All right. So what else? What else? Boy named Sue. I'm trying to think. I, I, I the man in black. I really liked that song. Um, Hurt. I think is just. I'm not good at singing in a low range. Um, Well, I, 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 maybe I could. It's been so long since I've heard a lot of this music. One and two and three and four. And... All right, so let's see. I hurt myself today. To see if I still feel. Focus on the pain. I tried. 
Yeah, that's a good song. I've also been playing, um, trying to do Hallelujah by Jeff Buckley. Man, that's, that's, that's really pushing it. <clears throat> getting late maybe a couple more songs if you guys have any more requests slayer i'm always good to do some acoustic slayer amy grant one direction pink floyd sure um Deep beneath the rolling waves of labyrinth and coral caves. Oh, overhead the albatross is motionless upon the air. Deep beneath the rolling waves in labyrinths of coral caves, the echo of a distant tide comes willow wing across the sand.
frozen. It's not so hard. I mean, all right, so anything else? Let's see, do I know any more Pink Floyd? Should I keep playing Pink Floyd? I don't think I know any more Pink Floyd. Oh yeah, um, let's see. Uh, tick tock, tick tock. You guys gotta do the, the, the talk sounds, the, the clock sounds. <laughs> requests you guys um, I should probably dial I got 20% left on my phone so we're getting close to um, you don't have to go home but you can't sleep here uh. Bauhaus sure 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 uh, I can't even remember a single, I remember the guy's face, um, but I, I don't remember any of the music. Bauhaus. I don't even know Rammstein. German music, I'm just... Alright guys, I'm... I'm I'm going to sleep. Um, don't be scared of shit or, or it'll get you. That's that's what happens, you know? If you're scared of it, it's gonna get you. So don't be scared. Take deep breaths. Drink your ayahuasca a couple times a year. Don't watch mainstream media. Pranayama, pranayama, pranayama. For mind and body alike, there is no purgative like pranayama, pranayama. All right, good night. For real. Thank you.